Hey guys, welcome to another devlog video. This is going to be a short update on what I've been doing the past week. Apologies if my voice sounds a bit weird, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment. So anyway, this week I've been working on implementing water into the game, or liquids in general actually. I also attempted to implement some sort of liquid simulation, but let's just say that's a work in progress. If you remember, in one of my earlier devlogs I talked about how my voxels were like 4 bytes in size and what I was planning on using each of those bits or bytes for. Well, I'm already gonna contradict some of that. Initially, I had the idea of storing structures, like player-made structures and spawn structures, alongside the terrain and the actual voxel data. But I've kind of gone back on that and decided that structures, or any objects for that matter, um, will not be voxel-based. Uh, so now I'm using that freed up space to actually store liquid data instead. So basically terrain and liquids are going to be voxel based and everything else like trees, structures and other stuff is just going to be individual entities spawned in the world. So the liquid itself is generated in the same way as the terrain uh, using marching cubes. But we're doing a separate pass of that, so there are two different meshes being generated, one for terrain and one for liquids. Um, what you see here is the water being rendered as just an opaque mesh with, with a solid color without any, without any kind of special uh, shader effects. Well, actually there is a shader effect. The animation is actually done using a vertex shader and the per face normals are then calculated afterwards in a geometry shader. So we get this low poly animated water look. So once I was satisfied with the basic look of this animation, I set out to implement reflections and refractions. Now because not all of the water is going to be one flat plane, there might be waterfalls, etc. I can't really do something simple like planar reflections. Not that I would want to do that to begin with, because that would involve rendering the entire scene multiple times, which I kind of want to avoid. So instead I decided to do both reflections and refractions in screen space using ray marching. Basically how this works is for each fragment we calculate the reflection or refraction vector uh, based on the surface normal and the vector pointing from the camera to the fragment. Basically the normalized hue space position of the fragment. And once we have this reflected vector, or ray actually, um, we take small steps uh, alongside the ray and at each step we sample the depth buffer and compare the depth against the depth that we expect the ray to be at. Uh, or in other words, the, the Z position of the point along the ray. And if you find that our sampled depth value is lower than our expected depth value, uh, then we know that our ray has intersected something at some point. We can then take more samples and do a little bit of backtracking if necessary to more accurately find out where the intersection actually is. Um, if you want to know more about how ray marching works specifically, for screen space effects like reflections, I've added a video in the description that should explain it a little bit more in depth than I do here. So here you can see the result of screen space reflections only. The red parts are parts where an intersection couldn't be found. Um, there are some inaccuracies here and there uh, that are kind of inherent to this method of doing reflections. Um, after all, we only have access to the information that is already on screen. We don't know anything about stuff that is not on screen. However, as you can see, if you combine it with distortions, it doesn't really matter that much. So in addition to reflections, we also have refractions, which is basically the light rays get bent when they enter the water. I'm using the exact same ray marching algorithm for this, just using a different ray. Now what we need to do is put the two effects together and blend between them based on the angle at which the camera is looking at the water. Here you can see a visualization of that. The black area near the horizon is where the reflection should come through more uh, and the white area is where the refraction should come through more. So once we put everything together, we add some underwater fog effects, we add some foam color to the edges and make them out smoothly. Um, this is the final result. Don't mind the gaps in the terrain by the way, that was because of a bug. So once I finished the rendering part, I started working on the simulation aspect. You can see some of my progress I made on that here, but as of right now I haven't really reached a point where it's actually usable. Um, the fact that in my game every voxel is actually a continuous ISO value ranging from 1 to minus 1 uh, makes this a lot more complicated to get right. In a game like Minecraft for example, every voxel is either on or off. Uh, there is either a block there or there isn't. 
So it's quite easy to let the liquid flow on top of the terrain there because you know exactly uh, what the terrain looks like when just looking at the voxel data. But in my case, that's not really true. Um, terrain can really have any kind of slope. And to make it worse, sometimes the distance between voxels ranging from 1 to minus 1 are spaced further apart in some places, more so than in other places. This makes it really hard to make the liquid follow the slope of the terrain. You can't just say, okay, I'll just look at the ISO value and if it's higher than the zero threshold value, I'll regard it as terrain, otherwise I'll regard it as air because then the liquid will look super blocky and it won't follow the terrain curvature at all. So in short, I haven't really figured it out completely yet, but I didn't want to stall making this video just for that. Um, I'm probably gonna let the simulation rest for a while actually and work on something else instead because it's really not an essential part of the game anyways. And frankly, it could even do without. So I didn't want to spend too much time on it. So anyways, that's it for this devlog. As always, thank you very much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment or like the video if you enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe if you want to. Uh, we're almost at 500 subs too, actually. Look at that. Uh, so okay, thanks, bye.